You don't have to tell them everything. You only tell them what needs to be told. Everything else you keep to yourself. So what are some of those things? I'm going to jump right into this, but before I do, hey, if you've never come across my channel before, my name is Josette Gamble. I am a local real estate agent right here in Tampa, Florida. I turn renters into homeowners. If you've not yet subscribed, what are you waiting for? Go ahead and do that. And while you're doing that, hit the notification bell so you can know every time I upload a new video. So what are some of the things that you shouldn't disclose as a buyer? Let's talk about it. And guys, if you have questions, feel free to put that in the comments. I would love to answer some of your questions. So the first thing that I think that you should never disclose to the seller is your maximum budget. What do I mean by that? Everybody has a budget in mind when you're buying a house. And if they don't, they should. Um, and that does not necessarily mean that um, their qualification. When I talk about budget, I'm not talking about what you're qualified for. Because what you're qualified for and a budget of how much you want to spend because of what you want your mortgage payment to be, are two different things. So never disclose to the seller your maximum budget. For example, if you find a house that is listed for $350,000, you have a pre-approval for $350,000, but you don't want to go all the way up to the $350,000, then you can make an offer for let's say three twenty-five. dollars now, if you're making an offer for $325, do not send the real estate agent along with your offer a $350,000 pre approval because you are telling the seller right there, written in black and white, that you can actually afford more for this house. So you want to keep this secret to yourself. If you have a $350,000 approval, and you want to make a lower offer, be sure to ask your lender to send you an approval for the exact amount that you are offering. You'll thank me later for this one. The second thing that I think, buyers, that you should keep to yourself is your urgency. You know, sometimes people say, oh, I have to get this house because I have to be there before that happens or I need to start my new job or I need to get the house before the kids go to school. I need to enroll them for a new school, you know, and just all this urgency. Because if you are showing a sense of urgency and the seller picks up on that, it can take away your negotiation power because now they're going to feel like you really need this house is gone past one you know you know you don't just only want the house you need the house they might up their price they might not be willing to negotiate with you because they think you really need the house so you're going to pay whatever it costs to get that house so never disclose your sense of urgency to the seller when you are making an offer. The third thing that you should never ever disclose to the seller is any kind of emotional attachment that you may have for the house. And yeah, some people buy with their hearts instead of their heads. But when you show that sense of emotion, the seller picks up on that as well. And they're gonna think, oh, they really love the house. They really gotta have that house. They have some kind of attachment to it. They like this about the house. They like this about the house. And they sense that. That's one of the reasons why when we do show houses, we encourage you buyers to not say anything while you're in the house. Because most homes, as we know, are equipped with security cameras. So the sellers, are watching while we are showing the houses the sellers are watching and they can eavesdrop and hear everything you're saying so if you have some kind of emotional attachment to the house if the house reminds you of your grandma house or this was the exact ha same house or the same model that my mom had or this reminds me of my childhood don't show that because when you do the seller can use that to uh, take away your negotiation your negotiation 
can't say that word. Your negotiation power. Okay, there it goes. The number four uh, things that you should never disclose, and, and guys, your negative objections. People sometimes when they go to houses and they don't realize that this is somebody's house, right? This is somebody's blood, sweat, and tears, and they love their house, and it's personal to them, right? There are many things or many aspects of a house that you may not like. Don't just blurt those things out in the open. Again, most homes have cameras and they are listening. And so if you are there talking negative stuff about their house, they might not want to accept your offer because they would feel like you're probably not going to appreciate the house uh, the way they appreciate it. Or, you, or if you're thinking of making uh, some improvements to the house, you know, they might want to give it to a family or sell the house to a family that they think is going to keep the house the way it is because they have emotional attachment to it. So keep your negative opinions to yourself. I mean, you can talk to your agent about it when you get out of the house, when you're away from the house and you know that there are no cameras and the sellers are not listening. You're not relaying that to the listing agent or anything like that. Yes, you can talk to your agent about it, but be sure that you are not saying that out in the open where the sellers can hear because that might uh, prevent you from getting your offer accepted on a specific house number five i mentioned that a little bit i just touched on it future plans don't let the sellers know why you're planning to do with the house some people just like to talk they talk about everything okay <laughs> they don't have no secret but don't tell the seller what you plan to do with the house what you're planning to do with the house is your business and your business alone so don't come and say, oh, I'm going to remove these counters and I'm going to put granite countertops. I'm going to move the floors and I'm going to do this. So I'm going to break this down and I'm going to build this. I'm... The seller might not want to accept your offer because then they're thinking that you're probably going to want to one, destroy the house. Or number two, they're probably thinking you are lowballing them because you have all these things in mind that you want to do to the house. And because of that, you're offering them something lower than what they want to sell the house for. So make sure you are not disclosing your future plans for the house when you are buying a house, you're making an offer, talking to an agent or, you know, because again, the listing agent is going to represent the seller. So you don't want them to know any of those things. You don't, you don't want to give away your negotiation power to the seller because once they have something over you, they can use that as leverage, right? And they can, you know, cause them to, you know, be firm on their price, cause them to even start a bidding war because now everybody wants the house. You know what I'm saying? So get that in mind. Number six, never disclose your financial situation with the seller. Now, when you are making an offer on a property, yes, the seller wants to see either proof of funds or um, a pre-approval. Now, they don't need to know how much money you have in your bank account other than you can pay for the house if you pay cash. They don't need to know what you have in your 401k. They don't need to know that your mama can give you $10,000 to help you as a gift. They don't need to know you're getting down payment assistance or any of those things. Unless there's certain instances where if your down payment assistance is going to interfere uh, with probably the, the process, because sometimes they take longer, but not necessarily. You know, buying a house using down payment assistance is the same as you know, buying any, without it, it's same time frame kind of. But sometimes in some instances, you might have to share that with the seller because it might be pushing things back a little bit. But for the most part, when I make an offer and my seller is, my buyer is getting down payment assistance, I don't put it in the contract that my seller, my buyer is getting $10,000 down payment assistance. They don't need to know that. They just need to know my buyers are qualified. They have a pre-approval and they're going to make an offer. This is why they're going to put down an escrow. This is when they want to close. And this is the balance. That's all they need to know. They don't care how you get the money, right? They just want to know when we're closing, you have the funds to close. So don't go telling them about how much stocks and bonds you have. Don't go telling them how much money you have in your private. Don't do that. 
do not let the sin. Because if you tell them you have money, guess what? They want to get as much of that money as they can. If you come in to put an offer on my property and my property is listed for $350,000, I just keep using that you know, number because it's easier. $350,000 and you're offering me $300,000 and then you're bringing, telling me you have stocks, you have bonds, you have, you know, 401k, you have a uh, $100,000 in your savings. You have, I'm like, well, why would I give you my house? You can afford it, right? So do not let the seller know your financial situation. They don't need to know that. The only thing they need to know is that you are pre-approved to buy this house. And that's why they need a pre-approval. If you're buying cash, then you have to show them that you have cash. Like if you're buying, again, a $350,000 home and you say, I want to buy it for cash, then give them a bank statement that says, hey, I have $350,000 in my bank account. Don't go tell them I have a million dollars, I have five million, I have this, I have that, because they're going to want you to pay full price or sometimes probably even higher because you can afford it. So don't disclose that. Number seven, and I'm really rushing through this, desperation. Again, desperation and urgency should probably be in the same thing. But don't let the sellers know you're desperate. Desperate people do desperate things. If you are eager to buy the house and you're conveying that to the seller, man, the seller knows she's desperate. She don't have any other choice or he doesn't have any other choice. He has to buy this house. Guess what's going to happen? Your $325,000 offer is going to be countered at three fifty dollars because you're desperate, right? Like people were doing in 2020, they were desperate. That's why we had all this frenzy going on because people were desperate. Do not let the seller know how desperate you are. Even if you are desperate, <laughs> don't let them know that. That's for you to keep. You're the only one that needs to know that. So don't disclose that to the seller. Remember, sellers want to net as much money as possible on their property. And what do buyers want? They want a deal. You're not going to get a deal if you're blabbing everything. So there are some things that you need to learn how to shh, be quiet. The other thing you should not disclose your negotiation strategy, strategy, strategy. <laughs> strategy to the seller and why you shouldn't do that okay if you're saying to your agent i really am qualified for four hundred thousand dollars i can even go up to 450 a lot of people do that but i want to make an offer for 375 let's just make it for 375 and let's see what the seller does if they come back at 400 i probably will still do it even if they come back at 425 we could still do it because we can afford to don't let the seller know that. Don't let the seller know what you can do. Don't let them know that this is a test. Don't let them know that I am <laughs> I am sending you this offer, but this is really a test because I, I know you're going to counter this offer. Don't let them know that. When you write an offer or when your agent writes an offer for you and the listing agent said, is that your highest and best? You say yes. Yes, this is my highest and best. If they want to come back and counter, that's up to them. But let them do it on their own. Don't give them the reason to do it. Don't let them say, well, this person gives me, again, another pre-approval of $500,000, and here you are offering $300,000. They're going to say, you can, you can afford a 475 house. You can afford a 450 house. You can afford a 500. Why are you offering me these lowball offers? So do not let the seller know your strategy when you are negotiation. I hope these things help. When you are buying a house, you don't have to spill everything. Sellers only need to know that you are pre-qualified or pre-approved. Do the pre-approval instead of the pre-qualification. Pre-approved to buy the house and that you can close quickly. You can do a quick inspection. You can um, afford a good escrow because that usually helps if you make if you have a five hundred thousand dollar home and you put a ten thousand dollar escrow that usually helps but don't let the seller know that hey i can really do so much more than this you know what i'm saying so if you want that deal and it's our job as your agents to help you get the most uh for 
the, the better deal, not the most, to help you get the best deal possible, right? You want a deal. That's our job. Don't go blabbing everything to the seller. The other thing too, it's not like a disclose, but, and I've had instances where that has actually happened, where my buyer and my seller are calling and talking to each other like they know each other. Don't do that. <laughs> It's so funny because, you know, I'd be like, okay, we need to, oh, we have already done it. I'm like, so everything that you do in real estate, if you have a buyer's agent and there is a listing agent, everything that you do should go through that channel. Do not bypass your agent and go straight to the seller because you might be shooting yourself in the foot and missing out on a deal. I hope this helps. Happy house hunting. If you're looking to buy in the Tampa Bay area, I am a licensed real estate agent right here in Tampa, Florida. And I love, love, love helping people. My number is on the screen. Feel free to use that anytime. If you call me, I am going to answer. Use that, call me, and um, let's see if we can turn your dreams of home ownership into reality. Remember, you don't have to spill everything. God there, be blessed. Happy house hunting. Bye. See you in the next one. Hey, don't forget to subscribe. Bye.